Hi team, it's Fitz Kohler and welcome to the Fitness Show. So today we have big news to talk about. I don't know if many of you heard, but our very good friend and running legend Jeff Galloway had a heart attack um, recently and thankfully he's doing okay, but I think it's enough to inspire a quality conversation between the me and the you and everyone else involved because uh, we all have, I say we all, there's if you're watching this show, you probably have some interest in fitness or health. I'm just guessing, or you really like me and that's good. But um, I definitely think his heart attack is relevant to all of us, much like my breast cancer was relevant to all of us. And you know, I'll stand by the fact that if it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. And I think everyone needs to squeeze their stuff and get their annual exams, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think this is an important conversation to have. Before we get to that though, I'm gonna do, commercial. I want to share with you one of my favorite running tools. And it's actually a great tool for anyone with an active lifestyle, but it's called the Rue Sport. And so remember the fanny packs of, I don't know, the 80s when everyone was wearing fanny packs and acid wash jeans and all those cool things. Yes, they were super convenient. And uh, I don't know, maybe fashionable if that's what you think. But this is kind of the same effect, the Rue Sport. It's a pouch. It's a magnetic waterproof pouch that snaps onto your clothing so you don't need to wear the belt. But if you exercise outdoors, if you hike, if you run, if you bike, if you go to theme parks, you're gonna need a sweet space to stash your stuff. And I love Roosport. I actually love the owners. I see them at all the running expos and I use this product. But you probably wanna keep your phone with you, right? You probably don't wanna hold it wherever. Well, it's got a pouch for that. It's got a pouch for the front. <gasps> For your key, right? Because you can't leave home or your car without your key unless you have one of those keypads and la ti da good for you. I also like to carry my lipstick, which I didn't include here, but there's an inner pouch. And again, it's all waterproof and that matters to the sweaty people and those who live in states like mine who experience lots of rain. But you can put your credit card or cash in there. Now, I don't have credit card or cash in there right now. In fact, I got my little change purse that says, I'm not bossy, I'm the boss. And the reality is, is I am <laughs> bossy, so, uh, but I'm also the boss. So there's my pouch. But if you like Rue Sport, if you've got one of these, go ahead and use the comment section. In fact, as we go through the conversation today, please use the comment section. Broadcasting live on Facebook, Periscope via Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So there's a lot of ways to communicate with me. Use that comment section, say hi and give your input. But yeah, it's The Roo Sport, and I highly recommend uh, shop.therusport.com. Get yourself a pouch, and then you can free up your hands for doing fun stuff, like squeezing your stuff, or riding a bike, et cetera, et cetera. So moving on, let's talk about Jeff Galloway. So I'm actually late to the party. I didn't find out about this until yesterday. And oh my gosh, I mean, practically gave me a heart attack hearing about the news. It was so stressful because um, I just love him. I think he's such a great guy. If you're unfamiliar with Jeff Galloway, he's a legend in the running community. He's an American Olympian. He ran track at Florida State. Won't hold it against him. In fact, I'll say go Knowles because it's a great school with a great running program. Um, but Jeff is also the founder, the godfather of the run, walk, run method. And basically what he's done is he's given regular people, not only permission, but encouragement and scientific evidence that says you should break up your runs with intermittent walks, and that will allow you to go further and actually go faster. So he's he's really a blessing to this running community. And I use the finger quotes because um, as we all know, not many of us exclusively run when participating in a race or exercising in our neighborhoods. We run for a while, then we walk for a while. We run for a while, we walk for a while. And some of us do it on a very uh, rigid schedule because Jeff has taught us that. So he's, he's not only a really great athlete and a fantastic coach, but he's a super, uh, he's a decent human being. And I've had the luxury of spending plenty of time with Jeff and his beautiful and talented wife, Barb, who um, I always consider the star of the show, but uh, I'm so glad he's okay. And I can't imagine uh, the fear in her heart going on lately as 
this drama has ensued with Jeff. So um, good morning. And he has a roost sport. Everyone should have a roost sport. It's a great tool. Yeah. What color is yours? And I got Dave Brunel here. He's a super nice guy. Very approachable. That's right. Jeff not only is approachable, he wants to be approached. He wants human interaction. He loves his running community. And uh, yeah, so this is the news. I'm going to read it straight off of Jeff's profile page on Facebook because I don't want to butcher any information, but he says to my Galloway community, after a career of being the cheerleader and coach for those who have come back from injuries and illnesses or illness, I will now be the athlete on the recovery trail. Last Monday, I was just finishing up a short elliptigo and rowing session when I got up and suddenly experienced a dizziness that I hadn't had before. After trying to walk around the house to settle myself, the symptoms got worse nausea and extreme fatigue. My health and the Piedmont team allowed me to survive what we know now or now know was a heart attack. But even those advantages won't make it easy to get back to full strength. My family and I thank you for your support during this recovery time. I will be taking some downtime to recuperate, but I can't wait to be back seeing everyone at events, retreats and virtually. I hope you can get out today and run or walk, hug or call a loved one. And if you are feeling bad, go see someone about it. Pretty amazing. So amen to that, Jeff Galloway. And um, yeah, I've, I've been preaching this for a long time, but I know Jeff did too. And for the two of us, I didn't need cancer to be able to guide people towards a healthier existence. And he certainly didn't need a heart attack. Um, but there we, there you go. So Jeff gave limited information there, which I don't blame him, but the news anchor, Jeff Hollinger for uh, Channel 11 News in Atlanta, his message came out, great concern this afternoon for Atlanta legend Jeff Galloway. Monday, the 75-year-old running star suffered heart attack, five stents, a pacemaker defibrillator implanted in his chest at Piedmont Hospital. Recovery will be long. So um, yeah heart attacks are serious business. And it seems like Jeff is, uh, yeah, he, he suffered a very, very close call. So that brings me to the conversation about heart disease and taking responsibility for our health. So I've got some statistics and we'll go over those because I think science and actual numbers are really important. But what I'm what resonates with me most is what Jeff Galloway did to save his own life, right? So he started out as a really healthy guy. He spent his entire life pursuing sports and fitness. So this is a guy who takes good care of himself. I'm not sure what goes on with his nutrition. I don't know what his genetic background is. I'm also not a doctor, but I know he's been putting in the hard work to make him a strong candidate for survival under any circumstances kind of what I did too. I remember my doctor uh, a year or so ago saying, Fitz, if you were not so healthy coming into this breast cancer ordeal, you would not have been able to travel around the country announcing races. In fact, you would have spent a month in the hospital. You probably would have had a feeding tube. You would have been far more susceptible to infection, et cetera, et cetera. So for starters, going fit, going into any illness or injury, healthy, fit, and strong is an outstanding way to um, increase your odds of survival. So start there. If you are someone who's had zero medical issues, well, you still have your health to deal with and you need to start today um, when addressing your exercise, your nutrition, your sleep, it all actually matters. You know, I talk, I almost never talk about looking hot in a thong. And if you want to go look hot in a thong, good for you. Go, go make that happen. But the reality is, you know, exercising often, eating wisely and sleep are three strong elements to a, a long, healthy life. And without those, you really put a long, healthy life at risk. Um, I'm going to keep including your comments as they come in. So um, Tanya Brewer, working really hard with a functional doctor to get her blood pressure under control and to overcome thyroid and menopausal weight gain. I'm proud of you. Yeah, I mean, these are things you can control. These are things you can control. So I'm glad you're addressing them. So the first part of being a healthy person is, is taking action, right? The stuff I talk about all the time, watch what you put in your mouth, exercise often, sleep, remove the cranky people too, because cranky people cause major stress and can certainly lead to um, medical problems. However, there comes a problem where now you have to uh, 
go beyond just being a healthy person. And that requires those annual exams. You have to have a general practitioner. I know so many grownups that don't have a GP. So you had a pediatrician. You probably went to see a pediatrician every month for the first 18 years of your life. And then you're like, okay, I'm an adult. It doesn't matter. No, it still matters. Um, you have to go in and see not only your general practitioner, but a wide variety of people each year just to kind of check and make sure everything's functioning well. You know, it's, uh, I, I always say the doctors, they don't come break into your house. They don't drive to your house, break in in the middle of the night, creep into your bedroom, lift up the covers and start looking around to see if anything's going wrong. You have to bring your body in much like you do with your vehicle. And we're so good with our cars, right? We take them in for not only one oil change a year, but we take them in multiple times a year. And then we get our tires rotated. We're constantly uh, taking care of the health of our vehicle. But we need to do the same or better for our body. So you got to see that general practitioner and have a doctor that knows you and uh, is familiar with your circumstances, your history, your ailments, your goals. You know, hopefully a GP can help you move the needle forward too. But then you got to have your dermatologist and your dentist and your eye guy. There's all these doctors that really can not only help you deal with crisis, but they can help catch things before they become a crisis. So um, going back to your comments, first of all, hi, Walt. <laughs> Good to see you. Dave, when you're fit and in shape, when something feels wrong or bad, you will know it right away, right? You definitely are a bit more sensitive to crisis when you are healthy. I, I call myself the princess in the pea. I feel everything. Because if you're out of shape, things go bad like a heart attack. They're yeah, far more likely to be fatal, not always the rule. Um, Sam Spritzer, he had one in 2009. And despite being in perfect health, uh, he had a blocked artery. You know, Walt Boyer, we blame the inability to create time as a reason. It's about making time. Yeah, all these excuses. And and I'm never, never afraid to call people out and tell people their excuses are lame. <laughs> really, if you can't go to see the doctor once a year, uh, what the heck is wrong with you? You know, maybe you've got it up here, but if you don't go to that doctor, you may end up on the floor or six feet under. So, um, yeah, these are important things to do. And as you cross certain age markers, it will tell you, okay, now you got to get an annual mammogram and now you got to go get your prostate checked. Now you got to have a colonoscopy, lots of fun. And then your heart uh, needs regular check-in too, right? The heart is kind of a big deal. Is there anyone here who doesn't give a rat's you know what about their heart? Probably no one. I can't see you out there, but I imagine all hands are down. So I, I pulled up some numbers from the CDC. Before we get back into Jeff, one person dies in the United States every 36 seconds from cardiovascular disease. About 655,000, 65, <laughs> tongue tight. About 655,000 Americans die from heart disease each year. That's one in every four deaths. It is the number one killer of men and women in the United States, heart disease. Um, heart disease costs the United States about 219 billion dollars each year from 2014 to 2015. This includes the cost of healthcare services, medicines, and loss of productivity due to death. And I'm going to agree right there that if you are dead, your productivity level goes way down. Uh, moving on to coronar coronary heart disease. Coronary heart disease, the most common type of heart disease, killing 365,000 plus people in 2017. About 18.2 million adults aged 20 and older have coronary heart disease. Uh, oh, and they may not even know they have it. And about two in 10 deaths from CAD happen in adults less than 65 years old. So yeah, you are not immune to it because of your age. In the US, someone has a heart attack every 40 seconds. And they said that every 36 seconds, someone dies of heart disease. So this is serious. And, you know, we, t we think heart attacks are for um, the re regular people, right? Non-athletes. We think heart attacks are for people like my dad. My dad, he kind of, I mean, he was a handsome man, but he looked like Fred Flintstone. He always had a big belly, maybe the eight months pregnant guy. He wasn't into exercise and eating wisely. And so he always had this uh, weight packed on his chest. And did he, was he a good candidate for a heart attack? Absolutely. And did he have one? Absolutely. Thankfully, that is not what killed him. But, uh, but yeah, he is the prototypical guy we would think of 
when uh, we're thinking about heart attacks, but the reality is so many other types of people have heart attacks. And so Jeff Galloway is this perfect example of it's a universal threats. And, and again, I don't know what caused Jeff's heart attack, um, but there was something, right? And was there something he could have done to, to see that maybe an echocardiogram recently? Maybe he had one. I don't know the specifics, but um, heart health is a big deal. Now, there's another person that comes to mind when I, when I think about athletes with heart disease. And I want to jump over to Dave McGilvray. So Dave is an elite runner who has, I don't know, he's run more uh, miles than I've taken breaths. He's 60 something years old. He's also the race director of the Boston Marathon. He picked up running when he was a teenager and uh, wanted to run the Boston Marathon. I'm actually going to hope, hopefully bring Dave on to talk about his heart, his issues with heart disease. But he's a guy that started running the amount of miles of his age on each birthday. So when he was 17, he ran 17 miles. When he was 27, he ran 27 miles. When he was 60, he ran 60 miles on his birthday. So strong commitment to fitness. When he, when the day of the Boston Marathon, he directs it all day. And once things have kind of calmed down at the finish line, Dave goes back to the start line and runs the race in the dark. He runs the entire Boston Marathon after all the other athletes. He's run from point to point across the country. He is a very fit guy who puts a lot of effort into um, his health. And just because you're fit doesn't mean you're healthy. In 2018, Dave ended up with uh, severe coronary, coronary artery disease, and he had a triple bypass. Yikes. That guy. So if that guy can have heart disease, and Jeff Galloway can have heart disease, and I can have cancer, we got to start taking this health very, very seriously. And again, I took my health seriously. So did Dave. So did Jeff. But what can you do to do better? You know, can you can you eat better? Can you exercise more or more wisely? Can you sleep better? Can you go to those annual exams? And my argument is, yes, we can all do better and be better. And, and here's the thing is, um, Jeff, he said in his story that uh, in his post that he felt dizziness and unusual fatigue. And he might have just, if he were a lesser man, he might have said, well, I, uh, I just had a rough workout. I need to go take a nap. He could have taken a permanent nap if that was uh, his mindset. But instead, he said, you know what? Something is strange and I need to get to the hospital. Now, I don't know if Jeff called 911. I don't know if his wife drove him or, or he got there in some other regard. But uh, he knew something was wrong. And so that goes the other message here is we have to listen to our body's warning signals, right? They send up red flags more often than not. And so my red flag was a lump. Jeff's red flag was that he had extreme fatigue and he had nausea. That is not normal. It's one thing if you're out there doing wind sprints and your coach is barking at you and you get to the end, you're on your hands and knees going, Ugh, that's horrible, right? But Jeff does these endurance activities all the time. I, I can't imagine that he was out there doing short wind sprints. He wasn't. He said he was doing the elliptico and the rowing machine, which is probably common for him. And uh, his side effects were uncommon. So he listened to his body. Now, I uh, hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to these comments because you guys are great. So we got Sam Spritzer here. Um, he was a track practice and the coach looked at him and said he didn't look good. At first I thought it was heat and humidity. Then I went to the club board meeting that night and stuffed my face on pizza and wings. Are you right in Buffalo? You got to do it. I woke up in the middle of the night, passed out. The rest became history, right? So thank goodness you survived, Sam. And, and what a shame that you didn't um, yield to your coach saying that you looked rough and you knew you felt rough. So you know, if Jeff would have taken that stance, we may not have Jeff Galloway anymore. So really imperative that we slow down and assess our situation. And great to see you, Brandon. Hi, um, Pam Frost, learning this herself, her triglycerides. Oh, this is a thing. Getting your blood work done is ideal because then your doctor can actually say, I can see much of what's going on in your body. And there are some adjustments we need to make. And, and so many of the people that I work with, when they use the exact formula for weight loss, 
they, one of their greatest triumphs is not only just getting into smaller genes or PRing at a race. I love it when their doctors say, hey, Bob, your blood work looks fantastic. You've made legit changes in your habits, which have let, led to legit changes, wonderful changes inside your body. And so your blood work can really tell you a lot. That's why you need to have a doctor that goes that order the blood work and you get them done. Um, yeah, she just had her physical and blood work and voila. So um, going back to other heart disease cases, I host the Women Run the D. Uh, it's a half marathon and 5K in Detroit every September. And our charity partner is, I believe, the American Heart Association. But we have a group of women we call heart heroes. And they they submit their story and then they're chosen and we recognize them on race day. We normally have between, I don't know, six and seven. But I read these stories the night before the race and then I condense them. But what I have found year after year is so many of these women, the fact that they were there at the race was an absolute miracle. They are women that took decent care of themselves but they started to feel a little breathless, you know, just simple things, crossing the parking lot, breathless, breathless, getting up to take a shower, nausea. Some of them had flu-like symptoms. And, you know, it's interesting when COVID hit and people said, don't go to the emergency room if you have flu-like symptoms. Well, okay, that also could be a heart attack. So these people with flu-like symptoms should be going to the ER. But all of the women basically say that, I had some, I, I thought I just had a flu or um, I couldn't figure out why I was tired. I thought I was dramatically out of shape and I wanted to get back into shape. So I went into the doctor and then the doctor listened and then caught, uh, requested scans and found out that there were major issues going on in these women's hearts. And some of them have had transplants. I mean, they literally didn't even know they needed a heart transplant. Some of these women went straight from their EKG, straight to admission into the hospital, straight to open heart surgery, and they were ignoring their symptoms up until the point where they didn't, right? And so many of them that went straight from the EKG or ultrasound straight into the emergency room, those are women that the doctor thought, hey, if we didn't catch this today, you would have died tomorrow. And so heart attacks, heart disease can be tricky. So we associate common... Um, symptoms with the stabbing chest pain, tingling down your arm, uh, lethargy, dizziness. Those are definitely things we want to look out for. But there's also other things. If you're chronically fatigued, that could be a heart issue. If you are performing way less in sports and fitness than you used to, it could be your heart saying, hey, man, I can't keep up. If you have horrible stomach issues, you know, you're, you feel like you've got a, a bug and it's pretty intense, go to the doctor, you know, especially, I hope everyone goes to the doctor, but especially if you're insured and you feel like, okay, it's going to be $20, $50, $100, go, do not put your life at risk because you're worried about saving $50 on your copay. Um, and even if you are, your money means nothing if you're not around anymore. All right, hold on. We got another great Add here, Brandon Tran should get Greg Page on. He's a great advocate for a healthy heart. So if y'all aren't familiar with Greg Page, he is the yellow wiggle, the original yellow wiggle from the children's band, The Wiggles, lives in Australia. Greg was, I think he was wiggling for about 18 or so years. And then he had to retire because he had orthostatic intolerance, which basically meant his blood pressure couldn't be regulated. He would go from sitting down to standing up dancing around and that would cause him to pass out. And if you're dancing on a stage with children, you probably shouldn't be passing around, passing out at all. It was, it was definitely a tragedy that Greg could no longer wiggle full force. But last year they had a reunion tour before COVID and uh, they were performing on a stage, I believe in Australia. And he had just gone off stage and he had a heart attack. And thanks for the AEDs, the artificial electronic defibrillators, um, they were able to save his life. So actually, Brandon, I've already reached out to Greg and we've chatted. He said, yes, he would come on the fitness show. And he's a real proponent of getting AEDs in as many places as possible. In fact, he just referenced a story where uh, they just recently got one at a school, an elementary school, and one of the children needed um, an AED to save her life. So he's a good recommendation. 
And I definitely uh, will pursue that. All right, Pam, Pam Frost said her husband's only 53 and very muscular and looks fit, but needed to get a stint in January. He wasn't feeling right and pushed his doctor to look further into why he didn't feel right. They found the blockage. Wow. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for that. I'm glad he's okay. Uh, another interesting story is one of my colleagues within the University of Florida, amazing man who I adore. He is into race car driving and <clears throat> he's not a professional race car driver. It's a hobby and he has some fast cars, but he also teaches race car driving. I didn't know that was a thing. Someone's got to teach, right? So he was at, I believe he was in Daytona. I could be wrong, but he was at a race track and he was just about to um, train a new student. Student gets into the car and he was feeling pain in his chest. And thankfully, this man is also a brilliant scientist. So he told the student, he said, hey, uh, drive me across the track to the ambulance. I'm having a heart attack. I mean, just he was in the right place at the right time in a vehicle. Student gets in. There's an ambulance over there, which makes sense for a track full of people trying to drive race cars. And um, they instantly took him to the hospital. He, I believe he had the heart attack in the ambulance, uh, the Widowmaker. And they only, he only survived because he happened to be in medical care at that point when things went um, wrong. So just interesting stories. And as we, as the statistics told us, every 36 seconds, someone is dying of heart disease. And every 40 seconds, someone is having a heart attack. And again, it's not always those um, very unhealthy looking sickly people that take no care of themselves. Quite often, it's someone just like you and me that you know, either has the heart attack and survives because we've, we've built our bodies up strong and we listen to our body. And uh, quite often we lose an incredibly athletic person who cares about their body to heart disease and heart attacks because we weren't paying close enough attention. And uh, yeah, I don't want to cause a hysteria, but it's definitely something we need to uh, listen to. You know, when our car has that check engine light go off or go on, we go, uh-oh, got to get it to the mechanic. I don't want it to be my engine. That'll cost me $3,000. I got to get it in before the engine breaks. I don't speak mechanic, so I may be getting that wrong, but I think engine braking is a fair, ton, a fair term to use. But your heart is your engine. You know, your car is not going anywhere without its engine, and you are not going anywhere without a uh, quality heart, one that is functioning pretty well. So, you know, Jeff, thank God Jeff is okay. Thank goodness he he notified the authorities in some regard, got himself to the hospital, and he's going to be okay. And I'm sure all the years and years and years of efforts he's put into his fitness will help him bounce back and recover more quickly. But it's just, it's a terrifying reminder that none of us, nobody is uh, immune to to a health crisis and we, we definitely need to pay attention to our bodies. Okay, Brandon Tran, if you can learn CPR, oh, another great advice, and learn how to use an AED, external defibrillator. Thank you for getting that right. Um, you honestly can't do any harm. The only harm you can do is by not trying. I agree, I agree. Yeah, it is, it's, so we have to take personal responsibility for ourselves, and then also perhaps some pers some responsibility for knowing how to save people around us. So I've been CPR certified since I was 18. It's been a long haul. I know how to use it. I'm prepared to use it. Thank goodness I haven't had to. Um, but I do not know how to use an AED. And that's good advice, Brandon. I should go learn. We all should. They are readily available in many places, not all places. But yeah, what harm could that information do? Because nothing would feel more helpless than seeing not only someone we care about, but even a stranger lying down in front of us and our inability to save that life is, uh, that would be pretty devastating, not only to the person dying, but to me as well. If I, if I had someone die in front of me and I couldn't help, that would, that would haunt me forever. Great suggestions. So what are you all doing to take good care of your health? Who goes to the annual exams? Which annual exams do you, do you attend? I wanna know here, I want you to out yourself that I just got my colonoscopy and it was awesome. And while we do that, I can tell you that I just went to the gynecologist the other day and um, 
Uh, everything looks good. This is a nice thing to hear when your doctor's like, everything looks great down there. We even ultrasounded my ovaries. I don't know why, but we did, and the ovaries look fantastic. And another thing that excites me is every doctor I see, not only the oncology folks, but then my general practitioner and my gyno, they're all uh, examining my breasts. And so that makes me feel happy. I do not feel like breast cancer is likely to come back to me, but it's always nice to be assured that someone has felt around, somebody besides me, and they're like, yes, I don't feel any lumps. Everything looks great. I get some sort of scan every six months. And uh, it feels wonderful to walk out of there knowing that there's, there's nothing gone wrong. Of course, I know it doesn't mean it's a guarantee for the next year, but I do enjoy having great news. And if you go to an annual exam and you get great news, high five yourself, stay the course or do even better. And then if you go and you get bad news, well then, thank goodness you found what they found and now you can start addressing it head on. All right, we got Annette. Nettie, I love you. Nettie, I used to train. Uh, she was a heck of a kickboxer and a heck of a hard worker, and I loved it. Um, my company does a yearly biometric screening, and we also get gift cards for participating. That's really nice. Yeah, as a corporation, it makes so much sense to invest in the health of your employees because it's been proven time and time and time again that healthy, fit employees are far more productive than those who do not take good care of themselves. And uh, yeah, this is also just a great gift is send people to the doctor, let them know when things are maybe going wrong at a low level so they can fix it before it becomes great crisis. I love that. All right, Dave Vernell always has great, great insight to share. I just had my 50 year old checkup, got everything done from colposcopy. I didn't know guys could have colposcopies. So blood work. Oh, was that supposed to be colonoscopy? I'm guessing it's supposed to be colonoscopy. Um, you name it, and it had done, and everything is clean. That's fantastic, because Dave just had heart surgery uh, last year, and uh, his health, you know, I know he's not taking that for granted. Congratulations, Dave. And I love that you guys are responding and sharing your private stories. This is helpful to everybody. Jennifer, Lady Town exam. In August, oh, Lady Town, Lady Town exam in August, mammo ultrasound in August too, colonoscopy last September, clean as a whistle. This is what they say about you. Uh, dermatology, skin care screening uh, in February, and I see my oncologist every month. And I think Jennifer is doing very well, beating up on breast cancer. I'm so proud of you. You're doing incredible things. I feel like everybody is doing way better with cancer care than I did. I was a bit of a mess and you were hitting out of the park. Very, very proud of you. And I'm glad you're continuing to focus on the other scans because they matter, right? And as we know, catch it early. All right, so we have mystery guest. Mystery guest, and I think this person should type in their name for me. Say, I am the mystery guest and then put your name so I know. But blood work completed last Friday, health maintenance checkup with a general practitioner scheduled for next Monday. Dental checkup, Heidi Ho. I just had my cleaning a few days ago. Dental issues can also be a warning sign for heart health. Excellent point. That is very, very true. In fact, I believe there's a strong correlations with dentists finding things. Isn't it gum disease matching heart disease? I think there is some sort of connection. So that's a great point. Mystery guest. Um, <laughs> moving on, we got Tanya. I get all the things. Good. Eyes, ears, heart, breast, gyno, annual physical. I'm up for my first colonoscopy too. And my husband just got his. And we found early stages and had a resection. Wow. Definitely going to get that done. So um, I th thank you for pointing that out. So I've not had a colonoscopy, but I have a good friend of mine. I don't think she'll mind me mentioning her name because she's she's out with her cancer. So it's Natalia is her first name and she has colon cancer. And uh, very interesting, she was complaining. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in February of 2019. Natalia started uh, having issues with her digestive system and reporting them at about the same time, February 2019. They said, oh, you're probably just um, well, gluten intolerant. She said, no, I don't think so. They said, yeah, change your diet, da, da, da. So continuing on, she went on and on and on. Finally, in October, eight months later, had to make up some sort of lie to get her doctor to order proper scans and found out she has colon cancer. And the poor thing has been through 
one hell of a miserable ride for the past two years. And she's still fighting like hell. And I mean, she's on a private plane going back and forth to Arizona all the time. But she has been uh, she was really good with Colon Cancer Awareness Month and uh, sharing pretty impressive statistics. And so it's made me think, OK, I need to do this. I need to get a colonoscopy. Nobody wants a colonoscopy. I don't think anybody on Earth wants a colonoscopy. I mean, we want to we want the information, but we don't want the process. So I started talking with friends about it. I was like, I'm going to get the colonoscopy. And they said, we'll do Cologuard. And basically Cologuard, you just basically poop in a cup, which also doesn't sound like a fun time. And then you send the little cup full of the you poo off into the mail. Can you imagine being that mail guy? And then they tell you whether you have cancer or not. So I reached out to my oncologist uh, just a few days ago and I said, Dr. Gordon, one of my girlfriends convinced me that um, colonoscopy or something would be a good choice. What's the difference? Is, col is Cologuard an acceptable alternative? And what he said is that colonoscopy will find poly like precancerous polyps and they can just remove them and you can go on with your day. Cologuard will find active cancer. So the, it's they will not find polyps, but Cologuard will find um, cancer at a already developed stage. So if you wait, if you don't do the colonoscopy and you do have polyps that could turn into cancer, you may be missing the bus. So I got his information. I went, okay, I'm going to get that. So I don't know when I'm going to have to do it soon, but um, yeah, colonoscopy is for everybody. Fun time. All right. Jacqueline Seltzer says, I go to the practitioners in many fields, gyno, dermatologist, orthopedist, podiatrist, ophthalmologist, dentist, you and me both, girl, that's so good. Do not underestimate the dentist. A conscientious dentist can tell a lot. I love it. And you know what's interesting is I had, uh, I think it wasn't until about 15 years ago that my dentist started grabbing my tongue and moving it around so they could look for cancerous growth. My childhood dentist didn't do that. Maybe that wasn't a thing or something they knew they could do back then, but I always think it's interesting. I go in for the cleaning, they do all the stuff, and they take a gauze, grab my tongue, and <laughs> twist it around. I'm grateful for it. I want all the help I get, or I can get. Who is the mystery? Oh, Christy Marriott is the mystery guest. Hello there. You know what? Apparently, there's some sort of opportunity to give StreamYard permission to share your name. I don't know if you missed it, but thank you for identifying yourself, Christy. I love and Christy had the beat up on breast cancer, I think, six years ago. So she's good, too, now. But I know she understands the importance of early detection. Uh, Tanya, yes, I think I for dental. I get mine twice a year. Me, too. What do you think? You doing OK? <laughs> Not just about being white, it's about being clean and having good, good gum health. Oh, Claudia Campbell, one of my girlfriends. She is a nurse and she is also a superstar uh, ambassador at the Big Sur Marathon who fills up my heart with love every time I see her because she's so sweet. She says she goes every year, colonoscopy, boob squisher, blood work and eyes. Love it. So it's interesting with the mammogram. And of course, we're, we're veering off from... Jeff and his heart disease, but I, I just wanted it to be the conversation starter. But people complain that uh, mammograms hurt. No, they don't. Now, I've had many mammograms over the past few years, and at worst, they're uncomfortable. But are they so bad that it's worth letting cancer run rampant? No, it's not. So if you think any of this stuff hurts, um, it doesn't. The worst thing I think that hurts a little bit is the pap smear. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Basically tell. Guys probably have no idea what this is, but um, they go into your lady parts with look what looks like a bottle cleaner, right? It, it's got the little spikes like a brush, and then they scrape stuff. That feels uncomfortable for me. But I still do it because it's uncomfortable. It's not torture. It's just, yeah. Uh, yeah, Cologuard. It, uh, you're going to have to look it up, do better than what I'm giving. But Cologuard, it's, they have the commercial on TV. It's the white box and the little man. I think the box is a man. He's like, hey, let me come and get your poop to make sure you don't have colon cancer. Something like that. That's a terrible abbreviation or rendition of the commercial. But yeah, Cologuard, you poop in the cup, you send it off to the people. Can you imagine being one of the people who's on the receiving end of that? But 
anyways, they check for cancer, but I don't think they're checking for pre-cancer. This is the, uh, this is what I'm getting from my doctor. I may have misinterpreted that, but I believe that if you want to catch cancer before it becomes activated, a pre-cancer type deal, you got to have the actual colonoscopy. All right, Dave Burnell. Um, that's a bad way to do a colonoscopy. Are you, are you speaking of Cologuard? False positive. It's always better to let them get a visual view of your colon because the scope magnifies your colon like 5,000 times bigger and they can take anything out as they see it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is the Cologuard is one way to find out if you already have cancer, but I think a colonoscopy is a really smart way to um, get a great look and nip things in the bud before they become problems. And here's Vince. Vince, who is running the Boston Marathon once again. Vince is the leader of the running club called Boston Buddies. And uh, yeah. What do you think about Jeff, Vince? Did you hear the news? Horrible news. I'm so grateful he's okay. And I know he's going to have long recovery, but he's going to recover well because he's so good at taking good care of himself. It will just be one step in front of another, like he's told all of us for so many years. And uh, he'll be back in action very soon. Hey, right, Claudia Campbell, none of it hurts when you're when you're alive. It's important. That's right. Or your life is important. Yeah. Colonoscopies get a bad rap. Well, this is what I hear is that the actual colonoscopy itself does not cause pain. Apparently, many people are in the twilight zone. I don't know if anyone wants to be awake for that experience. It's the prep work, right? Nobody likes the prep work. Yeah, I actually I don't like the prep work because I was so sick from chemo. I don't, I don't want to ever have digestive issues ever again in my entire life. I'm willing to do it. But uh, yeah, colonoscopy is the only one that I think has any sort of um, tricky uh, side effects, but whatever. You just do it. You just got to do it. Be a grown up. It's part of being a big kid. Vince, I did. Thank goodness he was in such great shape. Yeah, that and his uh, willingness to call for help and get to a hospital ASAP, he definitely saved his life. Thank goodness. And, and that's what I want everyone to take from this is that we have a lot of control. We have a lot of control taking good care of our body, making it less likely to uh, suffer from some of these ailments. And then, you know, hopefully our commitment to fitness makes us hyper aware of our body and, and makes us diligent with our exams. And we go get it done, right? We go to the ER if we got to. And before that happens, hopefully we go and get very uh, regular exams. All right, Tanya said, your husband was very sedated. He did not like the prep party, but he said he was has experienced much worse. That's right. I mean, there's always something worse. And I think perspective is um, everything, I think perspective is everything. Now, Rich Clark is one of the race directors at Buffalo Marathon. He's the ops guy. And Rich likes to reveal gory details. So I have a feeling that um, Rich is going to, I don't know, go big time with his colonoscopy, maybe Facebook Live, the whole procedure, maybe talk us through it, Rich. Uh, this is what I'm expecting from you. Rich is also an educator. He's a school teacher. So it probably only makes sense um, I bet Greg Weber, your your cohort at Buffalo, would not be against coming in with his like, phone and doing a video, a live video shoot from you and your colonoscopy. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Jennifer's back. Fits the nice twilight nap during the colonoscopy. Makes the prep and procedure worth it. Even though my last one was only seven minutes. Oh, yeah, you are getting ripped off. Um, yeah, well, there you go. That's a bright spot. <laughs> something very fun to take away from any medical procedure. In fact, my shtick, it's not really a shtick, it's just kind of my experience when I come out of surgery and I've had a few over the past few years is it's the best sleep and those nurses, they pack you in those um, warm blankets. Sometimes they're the blankets that have the warm air shooting through them. Uh, I have whined as they've woken me up and said, please, can I have more time? <laughs> like mom, can I go back to bed? okay, sleeping beauty. So they've been very sweet and allowed me to sleep. I don't know if the colonoscopy folks allow you to go back to sleep post colonoscopy, but um, it sounds like a good time. So sold right there. I just got sold on the twilight sleep, scheduling my colonoscopy right now. We got Brandon's back. Thanks for doing this. So much insight. Oh, that makes me happy. You know what? This is the thing. I mean, obviously I'm I can talk forever on health and fitness, but I've had so many people from around the world, Philippines, New Zealand, this country say, 
I listened to your smoking episode and I've quit smoking. They quit smoking from this broadcast. And so many people are now losing weight because they're using the exact formula for weight loss or trying new recipes, et cetera. So I'm really excited about doing this and I appreciate you guys being so enthusiastic. So Rich, I think has totally agreed for a photo shoot at his colonoscopy. High five, Rich. Thank you for that. Um, yep. Live streaming the colonoscopy. We're going to do full force with Rich, not mine, his. Um, Jane is going to go do marshalling with her mom and stepdad. Well, that sounds really fun, Jade. Uh, and then Jackie, thank you for announcing my posts and comments. Health is very important. My dad took me to the eye doctor when I was four. I was getting polio vaccines at around the same time. Uh, my day job is a corporate meeting professional. You got to hire me as a speaker, Jacqueline. This is what you got to do. That's what I took from that first half of your paragraph. I am lucky enough to work with Jeff Galloway and the Galloway Productions on events. I admire Jeff Barb and all affiliated with Galloway Productions. They are among the nicest persons I know. And the announcement of the Jeff Galloway races in Atlanta, oh, that, that they're on. So I'm not getting the rest of that, but that is great news that they will be taking place. Yeah, the Galloways are so lovely. They're just decent high quality people, kind, they mean what I, what they say, they say what they mean, and uh, there's not a mean bone in their body. I just, I really enjoy the whole family. And again, I've had great experiences with the Galloways. One of the funny um, Jeff Galloway stories I have to share is uh, we were all going to the Big Sur Marathon. So um, Jeff was presenting and I was announcing and presenting. So nonetheless, I'm coming from Gainesville, Florida. They're actually leaving Atlanta. And boom, we we ran into each other in the Atlanta airport. And we did a little chit chat in the terminal. And then we go to the plane, our open gate. <laughs> and, um, and I'm a Delta medallion member of some sort. I know that if you didn't already like me, now you can be super high impressed that I fly so much that I've got Delta points that give me a little extra uh, boost in luxury sometimes. So I don't know if this is, this is actually great for me because those seats, oh my God, the seats in the back are so tight and cramped. Anyway, so I see the Galloways and then they apparently get on the flight before me. Um, so I'm getting on and I walk in the gate and in seat like 1A is Barb. Hey Barb, how you doing? Great, blah, blah, blah. And then I go to my seat, which is row 10. And uh, I'm in Delta Comfort or something. It's kind of like halfway between coach, halfway between first place or f first class. You get better snacks and a little more wiggle room. Anyways, so I've already seen Barb and I didn't know where Jeff was. I figured maybe he was coming after, but I tried to use the restroom up in front, but it was occupied. So I go to use the restroom in the back of the plane. And there Jeff Galloway is in the dead last seat on the plane. Um, Rudy. My BFF race announcer cohort, we, he always sits in the back of the plane. He doesn't have any good sky miles. So we call that poop class. So Barb's up front, Jeff Galloway is in the back in poop class sitting next to the um, bathrooms. And of course he is because one of them got bumped up and there was no way in the world this man was going to let his wife of 40 something years sit in the back of the plane. So he's not only a great runner and a great coach, but he's a gentleman and pretty decent husband, it looks like. He took the poop glass seats instead of first class, which probably stings a little bit, but it was the right thing to do. And uh, it's just, just a good sign of his nature. And I know he'll be back and he'll be fine. Again, I'd love to have him on this broadcast. So I would like to give him a little bit of wiggle room before I start harassing anyone for, uh, for interviews, but it would be great to hear him talk about his experience and give uh, his golden advice. We got Tanya again, Big Sur is your favorite. Oh, it's your getting back to health and fitness reward. Ah, I love it. So um, if you're unfamiliar with the Big Sur Marathon, everyone needs to uh, focus in on the Big Sur Marathon. It is one of the most glorious, glamorous, spectacular races on earth. And I, I've been to a lot of great races, and I could brag about them all, but Big Sur 
it's just magical. The course itself, they call it running on the ragged edge of the Western world. They're right. You start in Big Sur Station, which is Big Sur National Forest. And then you run through the redwoods and then all of a sudden you hit the coast. And so on one side, you've got like uh, there's cattle ranches and there's mountains and then there's these cliffs and there's the ocean crashing into the cliffs and there's a lighthouse. And then you turn all these windy corners and go up and down and there's Bixby Bridge. And at the end of the bridge, there's a classical pianist in a tuxedo, Michael Martinez playing fancy music. And then there's the Hawaiian dancers with <laughs> their grass skirts. It's just so fabulous. The whole weekend is so special and our crew, all the uh, blue jackets, they're either board members or ambassadors for the race. They wear these fancy blue jackets and they're super helpful. And it kind of feels like you're at a wonderful golf tournament. All right, so uh, Claudia, am I getting it right? Claudia is one of the blue jackets and uh, they just make it so special for everybody. It's just breathtaking and posh. And here's the deal. The marathon to some people sounds absolutely terrifying. I get it, 26 Point two miles around, no thank you for a lot of people. However, you can still take part in the Big Sur Marathon weekend without doing the marathon. So there's a 21 miler, which starts, you know, five miles away from the start line. And they call that the walk. Now, I think you should hustle while you walk, but you get basically the best parts of the course, but without five extra miles to do and a pretty strict cutoff and then there's the relay so four people could team up and do various parts of the course so maybe you do uh, leg one this year leg two next year leg three blah blah you get where i'm going with this and then there's a 12k a 5k and i think there's a 15 miler but my brain's a little broken so claudia if you want to add in on that but everyone can find a distance that works for them at the big sur international marathon you, you don't have to do the marathon. Now the marathon's a hot topic, hard to get into, and <clears throat> it's a lotto system, but yeah, I, I think there's a good chance. I mean, I'm just feeling it that you will qualify for the Big Sur Marathon, not be not by speed. They do not demand that you're a, a, a fast runner like Boston. You just have to qualify, it's a lotto system. So. Slow poke, fast poke, it's up to you, but we would love to see you there. And I think Tanya is really smart by um, prioritizing it for 2023. Add a girl, I'll be there. Unless something tragic happens and they don't want me back and then I'll just be at home crying the whole time. Um, but yeah, all right, going back to Rich Class, Rich Clark, poop class. That's right, you know what I'm talking about. If you're stuck in the back of the plane, poop class. Um, Jacqueline. It's a great Jeffism. Oh, with him sitting in the back. Yeah, he's a gentleman. Thanks for sharing. Is anyone in this group going to Atlanta for Peachtree this year? Uh, you'll be doing it for the first time. It's two days, July 3rd and 4th. So is that how they are breaking up the herd? I hadn't heard of that. And that is really smart. Um, yeah, I would love to do Peachtree as an athlete or a race announcer. So if they need a bossy blonde, I'll happily come do that. If not, maybe... Maybe I'll show up and run. The third is a, a really good choice. I wonder if it's sold out. Do you know if it's sold out, Jackie? Help me with that. All right. Nothing tragic. I don't know where that went. <laughs> I, oh, that's right. I'm definitely going to be at Big Sur. Yeah, nothing tragic will happen. I love them so much and they seem to love me back. I've got them fooled, right, Claudia? the race director, Rudy and I announced those races together. And um, it is one of the saddest parts of this year. Out of all the races canceled, it's uh, it's it's a gut punch to not have Big Sur for two whole years. Um, Claudia, we will always have you and Rudy back. Good. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're coming to see us. Forget Bixie Bridge. It's all about Fitz and Rudy. I will... T I will keep telling me that, right? Uh, we love we love being a part, it's very special. It's a great privilege to be on the microphone at such extraordinary events. Um, okay, so we've got an off tangent, which I don't mind, but anyone have any great Jeff Galloway stories you'd like to share? Any new commitments, any appointments coming up for exams? 
what are you doing to take your own health into under control? And so uh, your eating matters. You know, obviously we can open up our arteries and clog our arteries based on the things we want to do, the things we put in our mouth. Our exercise matters. But remember, you can be fit and still not be healthy. You have to put it all together. And then on occasion, some of us get a punch in the punch in the cheek by genetics. So uh, it's important to keep an eye out for those uh, freaks, those fluke issues, peach tree red. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. I would love to register for that. And that's a five hour drive for me. Not too bad. Jack Jacqueline says Atlanta track club are the grand poo boss. Ah, I joined the, okay. She joined it to get in and avoid the lottery. As far as I know, the race by lottery invitation only. Hmm. Well, I'll put in for it. Perhaps I will put in for it. I don't even know anyone in Atlanta I could pull strings with. I have strings I can pull in other places. I don't think I have any strings in Atlanta. Uh, hot Atlanta, right? And Jeff Galloway, veteran. Been going to his Lake Tahoe camp since 2012. Okay, I would like some Jeffisms. And uh, hopefully what we take away from all of this is that, you know, again, if it happened to Jeff, it can happen to all of us. But his health was the reason he's alive today. I, I truly think if he didn't take as good of care of himself, this heart issue, whatever it was, would have shown up much sooner. And he probably wouldn't have known the difference and known how to call for help. So he saved his own life with decades of effort. Melissa Lingus, hello. She's my, uh, my neighbor who just abandoned my neighborhood. She took off and left. Just mapped out a daily jogging route to do with her 12 year old. And our new apartment, you may know him. Hmm, I think I do. Oh, you haven't even left Gainesville yet. You're still in the apartment. That's right. So you could, you could run wherever you want. I highly recommend Jonesville Park. Half of it is shaded. It's always full of very nice people. Just my suggestion. All right, Dave Burnell is back. Had surgery two weeks ago to remove two cancer spots in your skin. I'm glad I noticed them on his back. They were growing. Yeah, very frightening. So running with your shirt off can lead to problems. We forget that as runners. Yeah, dermatologists will be, uh, I think skin is my Achilles. Even, even after the breast cancer, I think skin is my Achilles. My father died of melanoma. My mother's mother died of melanoma. Um, my sister is apparently speckled with it. And I've had some scares that I, things that I've had to have removed. Um, sunscreen, there is no uh, way around it. If you wanna live long and you wanna live well, you gotta wear sunscreen. I'm talking to you, the person I know who goes out running with no shirt, who never puts on sunscreen. Uh, it's a horrible threat. I think bathing in the sun, some people go out there and pur purposely do it, is equivalent to smoking cigarettes. Foolish foolish. And not only is it bad for your skin, but well, it's not only bad for cancer, but wrinkles and spots. And yeah, don't do that to yourself. It's interesting in Florida. So of course, we're the beach capital of the world. <laughs> it's always the, the leathery people, right? The leathery people that you know, they've spent decades out in the sun and their skin is just brown, wrinkly, leather and quite often they're smoking and they got the beer and they're on a bike which i don't i don't know where the bike falls into this scenario but yeah that's the florida we have leather people and i i'm guessing they think it looks good i'm not sure but that level of brown not my version of attractive and i just fear for them i always think oh that's so scary they're gonna have so much skin cancer so um yeah the sun is just as dangerous as a cigarette or a cigar sometimes so please wear sunscreen every day and there's even sunscreens that you know there's the waterproof heavy coating kind you put on there's lightweight stuff that you can put underneath your makeup that's moisturizing beneficial for your skin tanya says me she met jeff during her first dopey and ran with his interval group it was where i was first introduced to his method it was a lot easier than straight running oh yeah oh my gosh yeah i i'm a very fit person and I've always been very proud of my athletic accomplishments, but yeah, running 13 miles, 13.1 miles straight without any walking breaks just seems uh, a lot harder than doing it with the walking breaks. And the walking breaks apparently allow you to maintain your pace and 
avoid many of the pitfalls of overuse injuries, the pain and suffering that comes from running at that pace. So yeah, his method certainly works. I'm a huge fan of it. And uh, anyone who's tr watching this thinking, I don't know who Jeff Galloway is. Well, look him up and then look up Jeff Galloway, run, walk, run, and maybe you'll be inspired to get up and get active too. Jeff always raises two thumbs instead of saying, right on, that's right, this is Jeff Galloway. He's like the Nixon of uh, running. <laughs> I have lots of pictures of Jeff with his thumbs up. Very cute. Oh, do you think Donald Trump stole that from Jeff Galloway? Or is that maybe just a regular thing we do to say people, hey, okay, I don't know. Um, Okie dokie. Jeff, oh, Dave rolling his eyes. What are you rolling your eyes at? Is it the leather people perhaps? They're real. They are very real. Florida leather people. Look them up. Uh, Jackie says, don't know if it's a rumor, but I once heard that when Jeff was born, his birth certificate read J.F. Galloway. He was born in the South. And the relatives were calling his J.F. Hmm. I'll ask him that. I don't know. J.F. That's very funny. I don't know. Well, you could start calling him that. Try it out next time you see him at a race and we'll go from there. All right, guys. So I'm going to I'm going to finish up where I began is uh, this is straight from Jeff Galloway's mouth. And I want to read it because you know, not many people know what happened. And Jeff was very uh, I'm sure he probably didn't love doing it, but he made a announcement. The other day, I lost it. Oh, my God. I'll be notes. All right, well, oh, here it is. From Jeff Galloway, from the horse's mouth. To my Galloway community, after a career of being the cheerleader and coach for those who have come back from injuries and illness, I will now be the athlete on the recovery trail. Last Monday, I was finishing up a short elliptigo and rowing session when I got up and suddenly experienced a dizziness that I hadn't had before. After trying to walk around the house to settle myself, the symptoms got worse, nausea and extreme fatigue. My health and the Piedmont team allowed me to survive what, the, what we now know was a heart attack, but even those advantages won't make it easy to get back to full strength. My family and I thank you for your support during this recovery time. I will be taking some downtime to recoup, but I can't wait to be back seeing everyone at events, retreats, and virtually. On top of that, the Channel 11 News, the Atlanta anchor, Jeff Hollinger posted, great concern this afternoon for Atlanta legend Jeff Galloway. Monday, the 75-year-old running star suffered a heart attack, five stents, a pacemaker defibrillator implanted in his chest at Piedmont Hospital. So um, no joke, it happened. Thank goodness he's okay. But um, statistics show we're all at risk. There are things we can do to keep our health, our hearts strong and healthy. Those come by nutrition, they come by exercise, quality sleep, and um, managing stress. And so you got to remove the cranky people and the cranky situations from your life ASAP. But you also have to listen to your body, even when you do almost everything right, as Jeff probably does. I don't know what his nutrition's like, and I, I'm pretty sure Jeff does not smoke, uh, but it could happen. So we have to listen to our body. We have to make appointments. You know, I had constant uh, echocardiograms while I was going through um, cancer treatments. I had 15 months of a drug that frequently causes problems with uh, a heart. So every three months I had an echo and you know what? It was no big deal. I would just go in and I would change into a gown and they would smush the little Doppler onto my chest and said it looked great. And it didn't hurt. It was non-invasive. There was no poking, but I actually love the fact that someone was constantly monitoring my heart. So every time I left there, I could walk out saying, all of all the things that are going wrong with me, it's not my heart. My heart's good. And how often do people look inside your body to see, hey, what's going on in there? And so um, do we all need to go haphazardly, go have an echocardiogram or a MUGA test? Not necessarily, but yeah, get the stress test. Talk to your general practitioner and say, yes, I'm 37. Yes, I'm a healthy person. I'm absolutely not at risk for heart is heart disease, but if we can have a look, let's just do a stress test. They can send you off for that. They put you on the treadmill and it's it's a piece of cake. But uh, heart health matters. 
every 40 seconds in this country, in America, someone has a heart attack. Every 36 seconds, someone dies of heart disease. It's the number one killer of men and women. And thank goodness it did not kill Jeff Galloway. So having said that, one final comment before I go. Mystery Facebook user. <laughs> I made an appointment with the doctor for a physical after hearing this news because if Jeff can have a heart attack, so can I. That says it all, folks. That's exactly why I chose this topic for this podcast today. So take it serious. Spread the word. You know, I hope everybody is sending their well wishes over to the Galloway family. He's a treasure, and um, we're great. We're fortunate to be able to keep him. Um, but let his experience use to help better all of ours because I know that's what he wants. He wants you guys to do better and be better. So if you haven't done it already, follow me at Fitness on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, right there. Tomorrow, my guest will be Jim and Riley Pathman, the founders of Team Hoyt San Diego. We will be talking about um, Dick and Rick Hoyt from Team Hoyt, as you all know, the father-son duo racing team. Team Hoyt San Diego and many other branches have spawned off because of it. They have been leaders in inclusivity within sports, and I'm thrilled to talk to them tomorrow at noon Eastern Standard Time. That's Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, I have the founder of Athlinks, Troy, Bus Troy Bousseau, who has just so much awesome information to share. So with that being said, I am out of here, team. Get to work. Bye, everybody. I love you. Make your appointments.